it's one of the peculiarities of the Kaleils is that they, they have this, um, from the beginning, unusual relationship in that they, yeah. they do a lot of um, studying together. Right. And so in the early years, when they're corresponding and their their courtship is virtually a correspondence. Right, yes. Thomas Carlyle is writing to Jane and telling her to practice her Latin. Right. Um, to practice her German. Yes. And he's yeah, sending her books. Yes, yes. So that she can do that. Yes. And so from the outset, they have this this learning that's right. going on between them and which yes. enhances and um, so wraps it helps itself them both, around. Doesn't it? In mm. a way, they're both sort yes. of um, sparking off each other. Yes. 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 And, and both very, very clever people. Yes, yes. And of course, even when they're in London, Jane has always maintained that she would never move back to Scotland, and she would never have. Mm. Um, but having said that, she understands the value of this landscape to Thomas Carlyle. Mm. And so every year he comes back. Yes. And, and walks ac across this landscape. Yes. And I think in many respects, this rejuvenates him. After they'd, to moved to, after they'd gone to London, he mm -hmm. came back each yeah. year. Yep. Right. And she never did? She came back, but not as frequently as him. Right, right. But he, he came back year in, year out. Yes. Right on, up until the last years of his life. Right. In the Carlisle country, it talks about um, John Aitken. Yes. Carlisle. Walking in front of his brother along the White Sands. Right. To keep away the hordes oh, that, that yeah. were interfering with his brother's passage. Yeah. God, amazing, isn't it? Mm. Yes. He was a celebrity of the day, wasn't he? Yes. It would just be lovely to go back in time, wouldn't it, and see see them acting out their lives here. Mm. And how totally different our lives are compared to theirs. If you think all the, the all the things we have today they didn't have, whether it's electricity or medicines or you know, motor cars. I mean, you know, we're we so fortunate compared to. Well, they 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 had a happy life. It must be lovely living here. But it would have been quite a quite a hard existence by comparison yes. to to ourselves today. I think today. it's when the the Stirlings came to visit. J D Jane went in a horse and cart and drove furiously all the way to Dumfries to get some supplies yes. to feed them. Yes, I've read that. Yes. And of course. It wouldn't have been a quick journey yeah. in those days. Two hours. Mm. Two hours I've read somewhere. To, which actually, if, if one had a horse and did that today, you would do, it would take much longer. But then I think horses of that time were incredibly fit, because that was the mode of transport. So horses had to be fit. Um, yes, I think that's true. Yes. But I can imagine why, why at times she found it quite daunting to be in such a reclusive spot. Mm. I can see that, and for a woman too. Mm. Um, I know she did mention, she referred to it, it from every now and then. I remember reading somewhere that she was concerned about a, a sort of highway robber, that type of thing, mm -hmm. um, happening to her, them coming here, and, and uh, she would have no sort of protection against that. Um, mm. I mean, even if one feels it's in a remote location today, Craig and Patrick, God knows what it must have been like. 200 years ago. I mean, it must mm. have felt very isolated here. But it, 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 we all, everyone to their own, I love isolation, I love unspoiled countryside, and I love, you know, areas where you can look out. I mean, where, there's not many places in Great Britain today which are, are left like Craig and Puttock, um, where they are uh, in remote, uh, unspoiled countryside. I agree. I mean, on the one hand, like yourself, I'm concerned that Craig and Puttock needs a great deal of work to be done on it because nothing has been done and it needs to be looked after and put back into the condition it was at that time. But also one of the beauties of the fact that it hasn't been touched are that we do still have all the buildings. Someone hasn't mowed in and decided to change all the interiors and, exactly. and pull down all the farmsteadings. So you still get that sense of what it was like when they were here. Exactly. Even Agreed. though we have some mod cones. Exactly. And we'll just... We'll chat away. Ch chat away. Yes, so... Um, we'll be, you're very good at dubbing it over later. <laughs> 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 so when, Mary, did, when did you last come to Craig and Patrick? Ah, uh, it was last year. Right, yes. Yeah, because remember, remember I came with the people from Estonia. Uh, of course you did. Yes, that's yes. absolutely right. Yes. And again, that was a departure. 
Yeah. Because do you know that there isn't a single volume of Carlyle's work has been translated into Estonian? God. And yet we get two Estonian curators. Amazing. Yeah. But what I'm hoping to do with that is um, a book friend of mine is going to give me another copy of Heroes and Hero Worship. Right. Yes. I'm going to send it to Estonia. Yeah. And I'm hoping that Birgit yeah. is going to translate it into Estonia. All right. And then I'm going to see yeah. if I can inveigle someone yeah. to actually publish it. <laughs> Very good. And maybe have a launch with yeah. um, the Estonian Embassy. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Because um, there's a lady who publishes a, an Estonian magazine. Right. I was told that um, that we did they actually studied them at school. But they had to study them in German. Because he's never ever been translated into English and into Estonian. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so when Birgit had gone back, she read the Kalau country because I gave her a copy. Yeah. And when she finished reading that she said, I'm going to go to the library and see if I can get something else yeah. to read. And she wrote to me and said for looking down on the hill. Yes, yes. <laughs> was that was the canon here when Carlisle was here? Uh, no, I'm afraid they I'm afraid they weren't. No, they've they've come from my previous home. Um, but I rather uh, uh, like having them there. When my nephews were very small, I used to put a charge in them, a, a blank charge, yeah. and fire them, and it would make a very loud bang and a lot of smoke and a flash, and yeah. that got my nephews who were under 10 at the time, that they thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, but no, they, they, they're, just, they're something I've had in, you know, in, in my family, so I've, it's rather nice to have them have them with me, although they're not part of the history of Craig and Patek. Yeah. I was a partner in a firm of solicitors as a charter surveyor rather than as a lawyer, and um, I, my role was to uh, factor, as we call it in Scotland, or manage um, uh, rural estates for clients of Brodie's. So you feel eminently qualified to rehabilitate Craig Well, it, it's, it, I would love to see it restored. I'd, I'd love to see it uh, brought back to how it once was. But well, it's not so much you'd love to, it's your intent. To it's my intent, it. exactly, yeah. yes. And, uh, and to keep it open to people who are interested in Carlisle and and want to come here and uh, pay homage. Absolutely, yes. I think it's it, it's an important enough historic icon uh, for all around the world. Uh, uh, to, it's it, it's of interest to so many people that I think it's vital that people should be allowed to see it. Yeah, there's a great deal as I've noticed. There's a great deal of rehabilitation that needs to take place. You, maybe we can take a walk around and look at some of the, uh, and you can comment on some of the, some of the ideas that you have. Yes, absolutely. I would be delighted to do that. Okay. I remember coming up here, and seeing that, and falling in love with it. Um, it's just a very pretty sight from, from here. Um, it's slightly obscured this time of year by the leaves on the trees but you see it in its uh, you see the t all of it during the winter obviously when the leaves are off um, yeah it's beautiful and now we've planted a number of these have been planted quite nice these trees which we have to protect from livestock but uh, these nice hardwoods will replace the number that have died around the house. Um. From the house up across the fields to the uh, up here to, to, where to the, the hill yes you can't, can't really see it quite see it's behind these trees here yeah. you can just see it rising slightly actually if the camera will pick up yep. the sun shining on it behind those trees but they would have gone from my house, my, my guess is they would have gone from the house up this this path is known as Jane's Lane. 
of where that gate is. And the most logical way they would have gone would have been from the house through that gate and then through this field to that far gate which takes you up onto the Craig and Puttock Moor. And they would have walked across the moor and then started to climb the hill at the edge of the moor and that would take them up to where they stood and they came out with quite a, Carlyle came out with quite a famous quotation, didn't he, Mary? About the Dunscore Kirk. Do you know that one? I'm trying to remember the actual wording of it. I know, I can never remember. I know, I'm absolutely awful this game. Yeah. Um, no, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone, sorry. Yeah. I'll have to record it another time for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had a number of quite interesting conversations. And some of the, what they said, has been documented, I think, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I've got to replace it. Um, that's how I got the shut shut. I am getting Very round. I've, I've replaced a number of them, but they're all because of um, its historic nature. Historic Scotland have insisted on, which is right, which is what I would have done, is putting in new sash and case windows mm -hmm. with double pane glass. Whereas what Historic Scotland wanted a bit originally was for me to renovate the existing windows, but you can see from that one just how rotten they are. So there wasn't yes. really anything to renovate. Nothing. So luckily, after a lot of toing and froing, uh, Historic Scotland uh, allowed me to get uh, Ventrola windows, but those mm. put new windows in, but they had to be Ventrola, mm -hmm. which are, uh, you know, traditionally made sash and case windows, but with modern ruddy running gear, which you can't see, yeah. so they work you know, even better than, than, the, original than, than one. the original ones ever did. Mm. Um. And that, that one certainly won't be saved, will it? <laughs> no, that one is. Uh, it's a perfect place for a writer to live, which is what yes, I Yes, that's true, exactly. To, yes, uh, that's true. To yes. Carlisle, so stay yeah. here and yes, write. Yes, exactly. Exactly that. So this is the uh, kitchen. This is right the here. Carlisle's kitchen. Exactly. And there are the new windows. There are these are the new windows, that one mm. and that one, the there one. And they're Small really nice. They're and actually this window is where Carlyle wrote. It's his study. That's his study. Behind this window, yes. Uh, downstairs. Yes. Yeah. He only gets to go upstairs once he moves to Cheney Road. Yes. And then he ends up in the attic. Yeah. Because of course that's soundproof for him. Yes. So that's get, true. again, yeah. you get this idea of someone who likes to work on their own, who likes to be quiet and you can see the reasoning why he would have liked this place so much because when he gets to Cheney Row there comes a point where on and off Jane has, is getting rid of pe people who have chickens she's getting into negotiations about people who are having piano lessons and all because Thomas Carlyle doesn't like noise so this place for him would have been the perfect place for him to, to write and again I say it's the reason why Sartre Resartus is, exists is because of the very nature of this environment. And interesting also that Thomas Carlyle phrased and actually invented the modern word environment. He invented the what? The, mm. the, the word environment. Environment? Yes. Thomas Carlyle. In, it, in, yes. its, in its modern context, it was invented by Thomas Carlyle. So that's yes. where his study is. Yes. Where he wrote Sartre Resartus. Right next to the farm door. Yes. Uh, Alex Cottage, um, which was uh, basically uh, used to be up on the hill, which I think you've seen uh, as you approach. And when Thomas and Jane came to live at Craig and Puttock in 1828, uh, Alec, and uh, who was Thomas's brother, and Thomas's sister Mary were both living in the main house and very quickly after the Carlyles arrived, Thomas and Jane, Jane uh, quite understandably found it a little bit too much to find herself not only living with her husband in the house but also to have her husband's brother and his sister. It was all a bit too much for her. So Thomas uh, commissioned uh, builders to totally dismantle this house which used to be up on, in the wood on the hillside and bring it down stone by stone and reassemble it here in the farmstead especially for um, uh, Alec and Mary to live in so that, uh, that Thomas and Jane could live in the house 
in in relative uh, privacy. Uh, and tragically, this house has a lot has been written about this house actually, because there are a lot of stories attached to Thomas's uh, siblings who were living here, and um, it's all been recorded. Uh, and it's just terribly sad to see see the house in in the state it it now is. And hopefully, eventually, uh, I'd like to see it uh, 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 restored and brought back to its former glory. to put a barn. But um, George Armour, who was a very serious farmer back in the 1950s, uh, decided he wanted the barn here. So the question now is whether one goes to the expense of taking it, dismantling it and putting it somewhere else. That's probably the correct thing to do. Um, but it would take a lot of money to do that. Do you get stung? No, no. Now don't go in. Isn't it sad? I can't bear looking at it. It upsets me too much. It, you see, it won't be long now. The stonework will all start to collapse mm. soon if we don't mm. rescue it. See, look at those slates there. They're about to come down. Yeah. It must be lovely when it was first built. I know. Because I know. The it's facing the right direction. Yeah. Which is more than what the house does. <laughs> See, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I would say that what's happened is they bro brought this down. Yeah. I think they've added to it. Yes, I think you're right, actually. I won't stand all over this. Yeah. Street, but this looks different. Yeah, I, know, I agree. I agree. I, I think, Clara, come here. I think that's. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it has somebody has. To but then the the Helen Helen Allingham picture it's identical uh -huh. to this. You can see that this hasn't changed at all. So yeah. I don't know unless that you think they might have what slapped a door in where there well, wasn't one. Well, the I Helen think, Allingham painting yeah, is I, from the other side, so you can't I, tell what. Was I think there. possibly. Um, if this came down off the hillside. Yes. You've probably got what is a smaller property than this originally. Yes. Because the chimney pots and some of this are dressed stone. Yes. Now, you get that in some of the buildings that James Carlyle builds anyway. Yes. And one of the things that he talks about, Carlyle, in the reminiscences, in example, when he talks about his father building Cressfield, yes. it's that his father stops being a stonemason, not because he doesn't like being a mason, but because everybody wants very fancy houses all of a sudden yeah, yeah. and so the completely different style to what his father has right. previously done yeah. and his father is not happy with this way yeah. this modern way of building yeah, interesting. Yeah. and so whilst the Carlyles may have used some dressed stone the arched houses etc are all rubble built right. yeah. so that would make sense to me yeah. and it would make sense that they maybe enlarged these windows slightly as well yeah. Yeah. So that they do face out onto yes. the landscape. Yes. But so why is this window blocked off? This uh, I think they had pigs in here. That rages. Yeah. yeah. You see that wall there? I think these were pig kennels. I think um, you're right. I've yeah. seen a number of buildings that have gone out of use in this in the, area. And they've turned them into yeah. the houses. In. It's absolutely outrageous, but that's what I think happened. They thought, yeah. well, let's use that old cottage to put pigs in. And no so thought. awful. I mean, mm. you know. And particularly the, such a historic house, too. But then I'm sure with lots of historic houses, things like that has happened in the yes. past, and you can still I, 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 bring them back to their uh, former glory. Yeah, um, no, it would just be so nice to see this painstakingly restored and put back exactly but as you see it. In the, the windows look a similar size to those on the house itself, don't they? Yes, I've just noticed something quite interesting. That window is at a higher level. To that yes, one. I noticed that. This is strange. I don't know why that. Yeah. Is. It's almost like it's it, the house is getting bigger as it goes. It's going downhill, and it's mm. like, which is probably what exactly it is doing. It looks like 
Yes. If that corner is shorter and that corner there is longer. Yes, so it is, in it fact, is. it's built into the hill. It's isn't built it? right into the landscape. Yes, isn't it is, yeah. And again, that would be a feature of the type of work that James Carlyle would do. Yes. He wouldn't level so it you up. you think James Carlyle would have built this? I think him. And in other words, took it from, took it down from the hillside and brought it. I, down. I certainly think he would have supervised sure what. Because Thomas would want to use all his family as much as he could to do everything. Well, I know. In the past, the the assumption has always been that when James Carlyle stopped be, being a stonemason and stopped working as a stonemason, that that was the end of the trade. Yes. But actually, if you start looking at um, the peripheral family, yes. there are quite a number of stonemasons still in the family. Right, yeah. So there's nothing to say that James Car Carlyle couldn't have overseen yes, I'm sure that's right. the work. Sure, that's and right. I would have no doubt whatsoever yeah. that that, James that is Carlyle's. Carlyle's Thomas's father. Yes. Yeah. I have no doubt that that's Carlyle's handiwork. He was work. definitely still alive when Carlyle was going to live here. Yes, yes. he was. Of course he was. Yes. Yeah. So that would account for Yes, because he died. Mm. Brownstone. His James yeah. Carlyle died when Thomas Carlyle was down in London trying to get a publisher for Sartre Resartus. Oh, that's and that's why he started writing the reminiscences. Right, he wrote a reminiscence of yes. his father. Yes, of course. So, yeah, I would say that's a Carlyle house. No, it makes sense. I mean, I, I've noticed that Carlyle, um, whilst I, I, I don't think he was absolutely destitute financially, equally he wasn't flush. No. And you can see time and time again he'll use a way of doing something, like the, the, the picture which you commented on, Bill, of the house, the one you liked, that was done by somebody called George Moore, who was actually an advocate. And it was a sideline for him to paint, and he was a good friend of Thomas's. And Goethe asked Thomas, because when they when they were producing *The Life of Schiller*, he wanted a picture of Craig Patrick in the frontispiece of the right. book. Mm -hmm. And Goethe asked Thomas if he could have a picture done of Craig and Patrick to go into the front of *The Life of mm -hmm. Schiller*. And Thomas, not wanting to spend considerable sums commissioning an expensive Edinburgh artist or whatever, mm -hmm. got his friend George Moore down, the advocate, who, and that, that's how, that's how that, that picture came about. And in fact he did two, he did the, the one of Craig Buttig in the distance, mm. and the one uh, which I showed you at lunchtime, um, the coloured one. Yes. Um, uh, so that's how those two paintings came about. Oh. And I didn't know that uh, Kurder and uh, Carlyle very much so. And they were col collaborating here at Craig and Patrick. Goethe was here. Goethe never, no, Goethe never came here, but whilst Carlyle was living here, he was um, corresponding with uh, 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 Carlyle. And rather tragically, Goethe actually died when they were here still. I think Goethe died. They left, the, the Carlyles left here in 1834. Okay. I'm pretty certain Goethe. Cl oh, Clara, come out of there. Come out of there. Come out there. Come, Clara, come here. Come here. Come on. Come here. Clara, come here. Well, thank you. That will come down on us. Come here, stupid dog. Sorry, this interrupted. The, <laughs> right. the, um, the Goethe died when the Carlyles were here. And I think Goethe died in, you could look this up, but I think he died in 18, it's quite late on, it's like eight, something like, eight, it's after 1830. And the Carlyles left here in 1834. But up until that point, Thomas was doing work for Goethe, and they regularly communicated. I, I wouldn't describe them as close friends, but they were very well in touch with each other, weren't they, Mary? They certainly were. And he did, because uh, Goethe asked Carlyle to do an awful lot of translations, I remember, from mm. English into German or German and into English. Did Jane not also make a hat for Goethe's wife. Yes, I think that's absolutely right. That's absolutely so right. So there was obviously yes. a, quite a close friendship. Yes, there, there, was, yes, there was. I'm, I th I'm sure they met, but they didn't meet Goethe. Not as far as I'm aware. Unlike Emerson, who came here, Goethe, I don't think ever did come uh, here. I'm not aware yeah. of Goethe. Yeah. I wonder where they met. Edinburgh. No. Uh, no. I think it's something to do with Goethe discovered his uh, incredible interest in the German people and the German language. I mean, he learned to speak German fluently at a very early age, Carlisle. Yes, he did. Uh, and I think he was spotted. I mean, even in those days, you could say they didn't have telephones or television, but I think even across the water, people very quickly 
became aware of somebody who was showing signs of something special and quite clearly Carlyle was showing considerable interest in the German people and and of course could speak German fluently. If you go and uh, get a copy of Goethe's um, Life of Schiller and open up the front of it you will see a picture of Craig and Putter. Yeah. Of how this cottage was actually built. Exactly. Painstakingly. Yes I know. But it, it has to be saved. Another another 10, 20 years it'll be gone, unless it's something's done about it soon. I mean, you see all of this, and the cracks that start appearing. Once the wall starts to collapse, you'd have to take it down and start all over again. Mm. Whereas this, you could you could save it still at the yes. moment. Um, it, it has potential for you to actually mm. repair parts of it. Yes. And then re roof it. Pull towards it. Years ago, I fell in love with it when I saw it in, back in... 1985, and I never knew about the Carlisle connection even at that stage. Not straight away, not immediately. Um, and so it makes it doubly interesting because of, of course, the Carlisle. In fact, it's that, that's probably the, the most important aspect of it is the history of it. Um, but that's been one of the nice things we've been calling. Yes. It's been this journey of experience and learning about yes, this I think landscape right. and yes. about the people I that have I agree with that. It. Yes, I agree with that. And the Carlyle letters are wonderful yes, exactly. for that. Exactly. I love reading. The Carlyle letters that I enjoy the most are the ones that he and Jane wrote when they were here. Mm. Um. And quite rightly so. Yes, yeah, exactly. Because that tells you so much about what they were doing when they were here. Yes, yes. And that's in yes. a long time ago, 180 yes. years ago then. Nearly, yes, nearly 200 years ago, yes. Where would you like to see now, Phil? I think we've pretty much seen that. Yes, okay, yeah. yes, yeah. I don't think we need to really go. We could go around the farm. I could take around the farm in a vehicle, but I, I don't, unless you particularly want to no, have your abdomen us. shaken yeah. about. Um, I, yeah, it's up to you. I don't mind if you wanted to go for mm -hmm. when they were living here of the house martins yeah, under, well. under the eaves. Yeah. Jane, you know, because Jane, Jane Welsh, Jane Carlyle was a, obviously a writer in her own. She wrote a lovely poem. You can get it. It's on the internet of the house martins or swallows, whatever you like to call them, living under the eaves at Craig and Puttock. And here they are today. And I would guess that these are the descendants of the very swallows, yes, house martins, that lived here when the Carlisles were living here. There's no reason why they shouldn't. They've been back, clearly been back every year ever since. Mm -hmm. I would say so. Um, it was the very same knocker that Carlisle talks about when he came mm. back after having, when they moved to London. Although I would, I would have said that if this was the original door, these were originally panelled. Yes, they were. Uh, and they wouldn't have I knew that my predecessor had those cut into mm. the door. Mm. And I have to say, although that's probably the original door would have been solid, if that, not mm -hmm. is, if that isn't the original door, which I, I suspect it probably isn't actually. Mm. But um, my predecessors had these t cut in, and it has made a huge improvement in the amount of light getting yes. into the house. Mm -hmm. It's always a difficulty it, with these north-facing houses. It would have been a dark hallway, or well, quite dark mm. as it is, even you know, with the windows in, but it would have been very dark with mm. with a solid front door. Possibly what's happened at some earlier point. Good. Well, well what, uh, anything else you'd like to do or look yeah, at? I, or? Think we, I think we covered it. Yes, I feel awful <laughs> you haven't seen inside. <laughs> what I might do, if you don't mind, because I feel awful you going all the way back to America and you haven't even seen, stepped inside it, I, I'll just let you see the couple of front rooms. They're, I'm not using them, so they're like furniture stacked in them. But yeah. it'll just give you an idea of you well, know what it's like. You can come back next time. Yeah, it's nice you say that. No, mm -hmm. no, I'll let I'll let you. I'll let me just go around.